I'm going to share with you a reflection of Our Lady the Virgin Mary and the mission of the Church. To start, I'm going to ask the Holy Spirit to give us His Word. And I'm going to read to you from the letter of St. Paul to Titus, chapter 1. From Paul, servant of God, apostle of Christ, of Christ Jesus, at the service of God's chosen people, so that they may believe and reach the knowledge of truth and godliness. The eternal life we are, we are waiting for was promised from the very beginning by God, who never lies. And as <clears throat> the appointed time had come, he made it known through the message entrusted to me by the command of God our Savior. Greeting to you, greetings to you, Titus, my true son, in the faith we share. May grace and peace be with you from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I left you in Crete because I wanted you to put right what was defective and appoint elders in every town following my instructions. They must be blameless, marry only once, whose children are believers and not open to the charge of being immoral and rebellious. Since the overseer or bishop is the steward of God's house, he must be beyond reproach, not proud, hot-headed, over fond of wine, quarrelsome, or greedy for gain. The word of the Lord. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, the Virgin Mary, obviously for us, not only is our mother, but is this great, amazing mystery. Because regardless of how deep we really venture into the womb of the faith, of what God has given us through Jesus Christ, it is incomprehensible for us that a human being like the Virgin Mary was chosen for such an incredible, incredible journey. She was chosen to be the mother of God, the mother of the man God. And just the word man God brings us into a dimension that is impossible to reach rationally, humanly. That's why we struggle so much with uh, Mary's motherhood. And I say struggle so much is like, for example, when Protestants challenge us about our relationship with Mary, a lot of the times we don't really have the right argument to give because it's so big, it's so large, what is going on with Our Lady the Virgin Mary and it's so immense for us that you can hardly put it into words. And uh, obviously, most Catholics are very peaceful with that, and they don't let themselves be uh, questioned about it. Some do, but those are the weak in the faith that will be taken by any false doctrine away anyways. But when I say the Virgin Mary and and the mystery of her virginity, the mystery of her motherhood, the mystery of her assumption to heaven, the mystery of her immaculate conception, the mystery of her silence, the mystery of her humility, holiness, submission. There's so much going on. Um, we are short of words to express it. So. Just by speaking about her right now, by standing beside this beautiful statue of the mystic rose, I feel her presence, and I feel her love, and I feel also her inspiration. Because if there is anyone among all creatures, human creatures, that could really express what the mystery of Jesus incarnation there is only one person that can tell us exactly what it is and it is our lady the virgin mary because she conceived him as a man god and also 
she shared with him the most important part of that incarnation which were all those years when they were silent in Nazareth those years are so mysterious so incredibly mysterious nothing has been written about it and uh, you wonder what were they doing obviously I am sure that every minute of that silence of all those years, 30 years, 12, 18 years after the uh, finding in the temple, uh, those years must have been uh, so incredibly active, mystically speaking. All the, the, the miracles that happened around Jesus in Nazareth while he was growing up, working helping his father, the carpenter, Joseph, and uh, following his mother to the temple, so many other things. Mary, in this incredible mystery of her presence among us, brings us not only hope, because when we see her life and how she achieved an elderly age, because she lived until she was older uh, with St. John, and gave the apostles the strength to fight the good fight of the gospel with faith, with conviction, with uh, compassion, and with no fear. And in that company of the apostles of that motherhood not only gave them the presence of Jesus permanently because she represented him in a very extraordinary way, but also gave them that grace that she has, that incredible grace. The grace of graces, which is the grace that we receive when we get close to her. See, to the rosary and novenas and invocations to Our Lady for help, for supplication we present to her, for her mediation, for her intercession, we are united with her in one prayer before God. And that unity is the one that brings us so deep into the womb of, of Mary that we get so close to, to Jesus, so close to Him. Because going towards Mary is embracing Jesus. And that's why constantly the church reminds us that Mary leads us to Jesus. And obviously, at first, this is only like a catechesis, and catechesis sometimes become just like a lesson, a teaching, and probably doesn't do any more than that for years sometimes, sometimes for a lifetime. Sometimes you renew your faith and embrace the teachings of the church that were given to you early on in your life, and all of a sudden they become alive. They bloom, and that is extraordinary. And some people have the grace of being always aware and conscious of all these mysteries of the faith since they are little. And some converts that come into the church are so good and they are so awakened and so in love with our faith that they give us an example, always. Today, when we um, are navigating through this month of the Rosary, month of the missions, and Fatima, the mystery of Fatima, the apparition of Fatima, this October of 2017, uh, we have the opportunity to reflect upon all of the gifts that we have received from our Father, Almighty Father, sending Our Lady to speak to us as a messenger. How many apparitions through the years we have been uh, in touch with. We have received the blessings of those apparitions. And though it's been a hundred years since Fatima, we still can go to Fatima and receive the graces of Fatima and feel, feel the presence of Mary in Fatima. And this is big, it's gigantic, it's immense, because God left that column of light in Fatima for us to be able to go on a pilgrimage and stay there below that incredible umbrella of blessings that He left in Fatima. And Our Lady is so present there, and all the mysteries of the shepherds. And we know that we are already enjoying the presence of Saint 
Jacinta and St. Francisco and uh, hopefully very soon we will enjoy also St. Lucia because they are so precious, they are so gigantic saints that I can't even imagine how to express what I felt the first time I went to Fatima and uh, all the things that I learned about the apparitions and also what I received uh, and especially I had a very close uh, contact and union with Jacinta, Francisco and Lucia because the journey of faith that they, they lived in that little village at that time was so immense, so gigantic but they lived it so naturally and with so much love that still you feel it as if it was yesterday. We know that um, there are many other powerful apparitions and uh, the, what I'm trying to relate to you at this moment is how compassionate, how loving our Almighty Father is. Because all of those apparitions are His work for our salvation. Why is He sending her to so many places, in so many different advocations, getting so close to us that she comes practically dressed up, even in her skin, as the locals? And that is the most great, the most amazing gift because that shows the love of the Father for each one of His children, regardless if they are white, black, natives, doesn't matter the race, doesn't matter the color of the skin. He sends her in all colors and all races. And that is showing to us that He loves us all, that He created us all, and that He cares for us all. And that is what Mary is, the mother of all of the children of God all around the world. So, let's use this month of the Rosary, this month of the missions, to get deeper, much deeper, in the mystery of Mary. Just, just call upon her. Just talk to her. Just bring her so much closer to your heart. And trust her. Also trust her. You know how in the Divine Mercy revelation uh, Jesus speaking to Saint Faustina emphasizes so much to write down that phrase Jesus I trust in you and that was so important for Jesus to say and to tell uh, his instrument Saint Faustina that it was very very important that we know that and that we also say that and I tell you it's very important also that we also say the same thing to Mary. Mary, I trust in you. It's important because, because if we feel that maternity in our hearts, and if we understand that uh, she is our mother, but we, we really understand it, then we have a mother. Then we really have a mother, a celestial mother. And that is the greatest gifts you can ever imagine to have. Because the queen is the one that turns into the, into the king and gets anything that she wants. And I tell you, you couldn't have a better friend. You couldn't have a better intercessor. It, we need to have a mother like Mary because the journey of the exile that we are all going through is uh, a very mysterious one and uh, we go through so much in this life and we can't do it alone we have to join the immense power that comes from heaven and is offered to us in a plate in a silver plate for free just like that friendship love from Jesus and Mary because of the will of the Father so I leave you with this in intention. Please just make an effort and get even beyond the rosary, beyond your novenas, beyond what you see in the statues and pictures of Mary. Get into her immaculate heart. Just get into the heart as you do when you love your wife or your children or your sister or your brother 
or your friends, those that you love a lot, just get through that love, that kind of love, and get into the love of Mary, and you will find a much greater love. And I guarantee you that that motherhood of Mary is going to grow much, much larger than you can even dream. Praise God, and let's thank God for the Virgin Mary, for her motherhood, and let's thank God for our church, our Catholic church. Amen.